Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. Okay, so first I say the, how much time I left. <laughs> so it's uh, 20 minutes, and the previous I thought I have maybe 30, 40, so I just uh, cut some materials. So I, the social media, I don't need to convince you, is so popular. So among the 20 world most popular websites, more than half of them are social media. So in the social media, there are some common research issues. First, you go to a social media, or you first need to figure out all these people and what their relationships. And the second, okay, you go to social media, you already want to spread out some information and you want to promote something. You want to know how this information is diffused in the social media. And third one, you go there, there are multiple topics and people compete for attention. So you want to know, okay, how this is, a, a, this, I mean, it's called a topic com a competition happened. So the outline, I, um, I want to talk about three works. So first about the people's set relationship in a social network, and second, the information diffusion, and third one is a topic computation. So this first work is uh, it's just uh, presented four months ago in, at Eurovis 1-3. So what is the motivation? So motivation, once you go to a new community, and you want to figure out what is their relationship. For example, this conference, we have uh, these people, we have database people, and we are not may, may not that familiar with database people. So what do we do? Okay, we can plug their collaboration network. If it's two people co-author co paper, then we draw okay a graph. They have edge connection. So among this graph, then the people may have different interests. They co collaborate the paper, then in this paper they may share the interests, but they may have some other interests, right? For example, in this graph, okay, you have this red node is a researcher, green node another researcher. So their interest, research interest is in the right one. Is there some kind of overlap? So then you need want to figure out, okay, for this kind of large work, and there is uh, two, I mean, research problems. One is called the homophily effect. That means, okay, it's, uh, do birds of a feather flock together? So that means, okay, people, you have this, I mean, call the paper a lot, or it's people just, just, I mean, their neighbors in the social network, whether they really share, I mean, a lot of interest. So in Chinese, it's called the wu yi lei ju ren yi qun fen, right? We want to figure out whether it's true or not. And the second, we want to figure out, okay, if they share some common interest, and what their interest is shared, and where, whether each one has some kind of unique interest. So we try to use visualization to solve this problem. And we just talk about uh, how we do this. Okay, the so first, okay, with how about this is uh, in a social network, how you figure out, okay, what is their, I mean, interest, shared interest in a social network. So what we can do is there is a simple solution. For example, if in this kind of graph, right, if your x-axis is a distance, then y-axis is a, basically is a overlap of interest. Then for each person, you can figure out on the social network what their other people, their social distance to him or her. Or you can figure out that each one have a, a, a bunch of research interests. Or you just, uh, for example, in Weibo or Twitter, you follow someone. Then you can figure out what their overlap of their interest. Then for all these other people in the social network, you can plot in this kind of uh, scatter plot. Then after that, we do some kind of aggregation. So we use this called a histogram to draw it. So x-axis is distance, but it's distance one, distance two, and maybe distance three to five. And the y-axis is, okay, how many, how many number of people in this distance? Okay, what is the distance, distance to people, number of distance people in this social network? Then we use this kind of this dark, this kind of a shaded block to show what is the shared interest. Maybe 80% of the interest, they are basically the shared, and maybe 60%, so this different shade of block shows how much interest they are shared. So then after that, we turn them into a glyph, to a small graph, and they can be easily recognized. So once we plot this kind of graph into a social network, then we can find some interesting stuff, right? So if you look at this one, red one, and this blue one, their shape is quite different, right? 
So this blue one, okay, they have this uh, peak at the beginning. That means, okay, there are distant one, they have share a lot of common interest. They are all there, I mean, just very close friends, they share a lot of interest. If it's distant far away, then they don't have much thing to share. But this is a red one. If you think of it, they have a two peak or multiple peak. That means, okay, some people, is, uh, they have some, a lot of shared interest with their, I mean, not even their friends. Then this one can clearly, I mean, identify these two different groups. So once you enhance the social network with this kind of a, a graph, for example, for yourself, then you can easily find, okay, whether, okay, in, among my friends, whether I really share a lot with my friends, or someone, okay, I don't even know, but they share a lot of interest with me. You just look at this kind of glyph can tell you a lot, a lot of information. Right, so it's for, for, for our waste people, for example, Shia and me maybe have 80% we share interest. Then Klaus maybe we have uh, for 50. Then for Daniel, maybe I'm just a subset of his research interest. So, so this one can tell you, I mean, something about this uh, uh, social network and collaboration. And second, you want to know, okay, for example, we know, okay, these people we shared 80% of interest or 60%. So what is interest is, research topic, and what their unique interest? If not just two people, you may have multiple people, how you compare them? So we combine with a solution. So how we do this? First, okay, with all the people you are interested, then we get their, I mean, uh, topics, okay, their interest. For example, research interest, then each one, for example, you are interested in tree, in graph, I mean, in pipeline, architecture. Then we plot all the them one into this use, into this kind of a 2D layout. So they have some kind of distance, right? For example, the tree and the graph are closer, and is a, is a tree and the pipeline have a, have a, is just far away. So you can compute some distance. Then we can use multi-dimensional scaling to plot them all these interests into a 2D plan. Then this distance tell you okay how close the topics they are. Okay, this is the first step, right? So second step, okay, we draw this use a, a, a kernel density estimation to draw a contour map. So this kind of contour map can basically tell you, use this kind of a shaded shape to tell you how close this is the, the interest, these topics are. Okay, then for each person, if you are interested in some topics, you can use a line to connect all these topics. Right, so can you use a line to collect all these topics? So we use, what we do is use a mini, uh, uh, minimum spanning tree to connect all the interests shared by one person. For example, this is one person, it's all his interests, we can use a line to draw it. Then you can clearly say, okay, this is the interest, then there is a cluster, tree graph, hierarchical, this is a cluster, then there is also is a one branch is go to something uh, quite unique. Okay, then you have multiple persons, then each one you have a line. Then you can draw them in, into this kind of contour map. So you have a green line, you have a purple, you have red, you have three persons. Then you can easily do a comparison. So if you think how this kind of design, this design is, uh, if you think about it, it's quite intuitive, right? Because every people is familiar with this kind of tree map. So this tree map, each tree, okay, some tree, they share some kind of paths, right? In this, this kind of, uh, in this kind of, I mean, uh, location, they all go to the, this kind of location. But some tree, they go to, just only this train go to this kind of location. So this in visualization we call the metaphor based design. So we use this kind of metaphor, if we explain this to other people, then they can easily understand, okay, this is a, this is a design. So we just show you some kind of example. This is from the InfoVis proceedings from 1997 to 2002. Then we got the titles, got the authors, abstract. Then from that one we extract the keywords. From the keyword, we figure out their distance, then use this MDS, use contour map to plot them. Okay, then we enhance them with some, with this glyph, we show these different authors. Then we can see, okay, there's some authors, they have co-authorship, and then we, they are shared the interest, and someone, okay, is not like this one. So what do we do is we pick up three authors, then we, we draw them into this kind of contour map. Then what do you say, okay, each one represent the author, then what's their research interest? Then you can very intuitively be, I mean, uh, perceived, right? For example, in this kind of area, all three lines pass through these topics. That means these three authors are all interests, they share the interest by these three authors. 
But this blue blue one, okay, this is a unique interest by this uh, this blue guy, right? So this is only he, this blue line passed through these topics, but the other one not. So by this way, you can easily figure out in a social network and what's their, I mean, shared interest and uh, what these interests are. So this is the first topic. Just use the example to show you how to do uh, this. So I think maybe I sc uh, skip this, uh, this whisper because I talked about this before. So I just, uh, because the limited time, talk about another one. So how about the topic of competition on social media? This just uh, presented uh, uh, two weeks ago at the uh, InfoVase conference. So what this topic is about? You think about on social media, the people promote different topics, and this topic will compete for people's attention, right? So this is called the diffusion of multiple topics. Just like Weibo, every, every day you have a top 100 Weibo, top 100 tweets. But if one get in, another one will be kicked out. So this is a basically, basically a zero sum, I mean, a game. So in this diffusion of multiple topics, there are two issues. First is the interaction. So whether it's people get distracted away from some topics when something more eye-catching is happening. And the second one is the influence. So how this is the key players, it's like opinion leaders. Like in China, in Weibo, it's this Da Wei, right? How they affect the interactions by this is called the recruiting the public attention for some topics. So this is, a, this is the two issues we want to address. So there are three, I mean, different uh, concepts. First concept is called agenda setting. So it basically, basically say how the ability of the news media, like the TV and newspaper, to influence the saliency of topics on the public agenda. So how this kind of uh, uh, news media is always just uh, key players to influence, okay? If they publish something, whether this one will get a lot of attention. And second one is called the topic competition, as I mentioned. So addition of any new topic on the public agenda came at the cost of other topics. So this one has become a headline, the other one will be kicked out. So this is called the topic competition. And third one is called the two-step information flow. So the info in the communication field, they, they do various studies, always verify the same thing. So the information is just a propagate through some key players. And just like a newspaper media or like this, uh, it's a big uh, or whatever it is. Uh, so this information reach the masses via some kind of uh, key players. So this is called the two-step information flow. So in our visualization, we want to address these uh, three issues. So in the first, we, our system is combined this quantitative modeling and interactive visualization. So you have this kind of topics, and you also want to figure out how this, uh, for example, news media, how this is a key player influence other people. Then also we need to figure out okay, how the hardness of each topic, right? So we want to use this quantitative modeling method from communication field to compute what? To compute is, uh, firstly, the topic competitiveness. So how competitive a topic is. And second is each opinion leader group's influence on each topic. And third is called the topic transition trend of each opinion leader group. So this is from this is a computational side, from quantitative modeling side. From the visualization side, we want to figure out the dynamic relationship between topics and opinion leader groups. And also this is the textual content of the post. So what is exactly what is talked about about this topic? So what we do is we build a system. Uh, so this is a system, this is a pipeline our system. So we, have, we use Twitter as an example. So you have a collection of tweets. Then you have, can do some kind of a text search. Then you have this uh, time series uh, stream of uh, tweets. So text search basically do some filtering. And you just uh, filter some kind of topics. And after that, you have this uh, quantitative modeling method to get you this uh, topic transition analysis topic competition analysis. Then in the visualization part, we have uh, two major visualization. One is called the timeline visualization, another is called the word cloud. So it first is show this kind of a topic competition model. So how you, you see, how, what is the change of public attention on certain topic? So in the communication field, they, they model something like this. You have a recruiting effect, you have a distracting effect. For example, Microsoft eSense, 
if, if for example, I'm a big player, I mean, in Twitter or someone, I, I basically broadcast, okay, there are Microsoft, the e-science is, is going on, okay, everyone should attend it. So this is called the uh, uh, recruiting effect. So I just recruit people's attention. If I said, okay, these two days is the best time to go to, I mean, Great Wall to see these four leaves. And uh, then this is called, I mean, the distraction effect. Just uh, distract people's attention from this, this event. So they have some kind of model to for each topic, then which player recruiting people to, to for this topic, which one try to distracting it. Then after that, you can have this uh, measured for each, each topic. So after the output of this analysis and modeling step, what you have is a topic of uh, is com competitiveness of each topic, and also the opinion, opinion leader groups the influence on each topic, also the topic transitions uh, 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 trend. So in the visualization side, our design is still based on some metaphor. It's called this one. This time it's called the river. So we know we all know the river, right? You have a big river. You have a small river, and the big river usually is uh, more wide, and the small river is narrow, right? So what do we do? Is each topic here? This one is a, is a topic. So each strip is a topic. Then the width of the topic of the strip basically represent the competitiveness of each topic. Then we can clearly say, okay, this is a defense and international issues. Okay, here at the 2012, got a lot of attention. This is a very competitive. And this horse race, and you see it's very narrow. It's not that much attention. It's not very competitive. And second is each key player, and we group them into three different categories. One is from media, like New York Times. Second is political figures, just like uh, Obama's White House, and third one is the grassroots, just like some, I mean, uh, 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 blogger or something like that, independent blogger or is a, a tweets player. Okay, what they are, I mean, recruiting effects. We rec we encoded this, uh, use this different line, right? You see this red, this green, and this blue. Then each one represents a category. The same, same thing, if this guy have this, play this and uh, recruiting efforts on this topic, we just draw a line on the strip of that topic. And the width of the line encode how much effort he put to recruit people for this topic. Then you can clearly see, for example, this is uh, in the top there, I have a thick, I mean, blue one. That means the political figures at this time period put a lot of effort to promote, to recruit people on this defense international issues. And also we have this, uh, uh, this word cloud to show, okay, wh when you go to the tweets, then what they exactly talk about, give you some kind of a most of frequent, frequently appeared keywords. Okay, now we just, uh, because of time, just quickly go to the, the, the case study. So this shows, for example, is 2012, it's the US presidential elections. So you see here at the two, 2012, at the 2012, then you see this is, uh, have, this is uh, six different topics. And also you can see this kind of efforts of, of uh, influence of key players of this is uh, on the different topic. Like you have a thick blue one. And this blue one, it put a lot of efforts to recruit people on this law of social relationships. And if you, if you open their tweets, then you can see the keywords, the convention. At that time, maybe it's, it's a US I mean, party convention. So if you go to, I mean, later, then you will see a lot of blue line. This blue line is, uh, we said, is grassroots. It's some independent bloggers. Then you will see they put a lot of effort to promote various issues, then like defense, international issues, the economy, and also this is a, a warfare, I mean, society, something like that. You can see, okay, how, ma how much effort of each group Play, I mean, recruit people on this topic, and whether this, to whether this topic is competitiveness is really increased. For some cases, you see it's a yes, right? So there is a linear correlation between the thickness of line and the thickness of these background strips. And also, you can see this kind of transition. So, for example, this is the red one. It shows media. So, media at the two thousand, uh, at, the, at the, I mean, the mid, I mean, July. They basically promote multiple topics, but at the end, of, but uh, the later uh, July, uh, July, uh, June, July, right? They only talk about this is one issue. It's focused on one issue. See, so they just merged this into one. I mean, big issue on this. Uh, it's called the law. I mean, social relationship. 
So because of limited time, I can not have time to show you the video. And so I just do the conclusion. So we show some key issues in social media and to talk about the two, I mean, visualization designs. And also some guidance and the suggestion I learned from this work. So one is a metaphor-based visual design. It's much easier for people to understand. So all this river, all this, I mean, uh, uh, all this, uh, this is a river and this is a, a metro map. It's much easier than parallel coordinates for people to understand. And second is all this one, we have some kind of computational methods. So for a visual, visual analytic system, you really need the uh, integration of this. So now it's uh, 5.59. I end exactly on time. Okay. So one minute for question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wami, so much. <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem, yes. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just some some kind of video, but uh, yes, this is uh, how it's uh, played. We still have time to pick up, to take a question. Yeah, this shows how the system works. So uh, you can examine, I mean, this is a uh, the system, then right side show all these tweets, and uh, then you can basically uh, select a time frame, time step, and uh, then pick up a topic. Then you can see, okay, which group is now promoting this topic, then what exactly they are talking about. And you see here, this is a medium recruit audience. So this is all this, I mean, the, the yellow line. Then you know, okay, now they, 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 they put a lot of efforts to talk about certain issue. Then try to get people's attention. Yeah, so I think maybe people are just uh, hungry. So we need to uh, go to the bus at uh, 610 <laughs> to go to the dinner <laughs> restaurant. So, okay, so oh, I mean, you. actually, we have a question here. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 um, Mm, hi, mm, Professor Chi. Uh, thanks for your talk. And uh, I have a question that uh, in the previous uh, set relations project, uh, I've seen that uh, people uh, from different social uh, coercive network uh, they may cooperate uh, because they share common uh, interest uh, and yeah. they may also compete uh, and for the the in the same area uh, because they may don't know each other. So yeah. is it possible to? combine the later co competition model for previous, uh, for this scenario? Yeah, I think uh, th 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 this may be a good idea. But for this, I mean, the topic of competition model, there are two issues. First, whether it's really a zero sum. That means, OK, my paper getting that clause kicked out. Or maybe it's just a win-win. For example, it's because this clause paper get in, that get people's attention, that my paper also can easily get in. So that is uh, actually is, uh, need more study to see whether it's a zero sum or it's win-win. But it's a good idea to combine them into this kind of collaboration work. Then see, okay, whether it's one guy's paper gets published, then all the people have similar interests. Also their publication is increased. Or just one guy started to publish or otherwise died. <laughs> right, so this is, I think, is a good idea to combine this one. Okay, to combine this two work. So maybe our next uh, info with paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, thank Kwame again for this great talk. <laughs> and uh, dinner announcement. Uh, there is a uh, staff outside the that door. Yeah. Uh, we will take a shuttle bus to the restaurant. So please follow, uh, please follow him to the shuttle bus. <laughs>